Gillingham's Paul Shaw spent six seasons at Highbury, but Arsenal's strike force then was led by Ian Wright, and Shaw was restricted to 12 Premiership games and two goals. Now at 28, he makes an emotional return. It's also a big day for 20-year-old Juan Maldondo Duarte, who arrived at Highbury from Sao Paulo last summer. He's played one Worthington Cup tie and makes his FA Cup debut at left-back today. And he'll have a fellow Brazilian, Edu, playing in front of him. Because Arsenal have seven first-teamers injured or suspended. They've also got Perez and Henri kept on the bench, no doubt with Tuesday's Champions League match in Leverkusen in mind. And while Lee Dixon starts for the first time this season, Tony Adams and Francis Jeffers start for the first time since September. They've all been injured. Quite apart from Shaw, Gillingham have two other former Gunners out to prove a point. Goalkeeper Vince Bartram played 11 Premiership games here, and number 11 Ty Gooden was once an Arsenal junior. Midfielder Simon Osborne, who comes into the side today, was with Wolves when they met Arsenal in the 1998 semi-final, but he missed the match through suspension. Durso is the referee on a sunny afternoon in North London and the occasion given flavour by over 6,000 Gillingham supporters at the right-hand end, the clock end as it's known, here at Highbury. Tony Adams back in action gets a big cheer and here's Juan, the 20-year-old Brazilian at left-back. Big day for him. And also on that side, Edu. Inside to Patrick Vieira, who scored in midweek for France. His last Arsenal goal was in the semi-final last season against Tottenham. Here's Lee Dixon, also back after a long absence. That was Ty Gooden there, one of the Gillingham players with a special reason for wanting to do well today. And inevitably, <laughs> we spot Sven Goran Eriksson in the crowd. It's a good ball by uh, Juan to Jeffers. And then Carnu. Oh, explosive. And Dixon's following up here from right back. He nearly got on the end of a bouncing ball there, which was brought about, really, by Bartram's save from Carnu. Here's Gooden. Perpetrini to Shaw. It's Ty Gooden again, and Onwara's coming in from the far side, Tony Adams' header. Well won by Paul Smith to Shaw. Osborne. And it's a free kick in favour of Patrick Vieira. the Nigerian who's back from the African Nations Cup, Kanu, and he had the early effort here. He really sold Barry Ashby and then struck it well with his left foot. It was more or less at the goalkeeper who couldn't hold it, but in palming it upwards he was relieved to see that uh, Dixon and Wiltor didn't quite get on the end of it. Gillingham chairman Paul Scally, who's revived and revitalised the club while he's been in charge. Oh, Dixon missed out there to Ifi Onura. That's a good effort by him. Well, this is a man who's studying for a postgraduate diploma in sporting law at the moment, Ifi Onura. And he showed plenty of uh, intelligence in getting into that position. see where the front men are. Will Tord nearest to that. Now Vieira to Carnu. Edu, Jeffers. Will Tord is to his right here. Oh, that's a brilliant shot. He hits the crossbar. Edu! And he's missed. There's a flag up anyway for offside on the second effort, but not when Will Tord shot. This was a superb attempt by the Frenchman. Crashing back off Vince Bartram's crossbar. Now, at this point, the player who was in an offside position becomes active. And the offside player, really, there is Carnu, who became active once the shot came back off the bar. 
Andy Hessenthaler took over, that's Richard Hill, the coach. Took over from Peter Taylor when he went to Leicester. Following the very good cup run and promotion season which Gillingham had two years ago. Went up in the playoffs after previously losing a playoff final at Wembley. Here's Campbell. Little touch by Carnu, and that's Edu! Oh, and he's hit the bar as well! Well, there's no shortage of shots from Arsenal. But Gillingham riding their luck a little bit. The Brazilian here didn't make the best of starts to the game, in fairness. Gets into a central position. And it's a sweet strike with the left foot. Vince Bartram unable to get to that. And for the second time in this first 27 minutes, he's saved by the crossbar. They've had quite an exciting time down in Kent over the last few years. Supporters of Gillingham. Two playoff finals. A cup run, promotion. Section was by Ty Gooden. This is Onura. And still. Will Ford steps across Gooden. But gives it only to Shaw. Now, Onura. And three to the right here for Gillingham. This is Shaw. Good position on this side by Marlon King. He pulled away a little bit from Lee Dixon. Not a bad cross either, and it has to be firmly headed out. It is short, uh, Smith, rather. And he wins it back again, the Gillingham captain. Osborne, knocked over by Jeffers. Free kick to Gillingham. And Barry Ashby to help Ifeonora here in the air. If Osborne can have planted on one of their heads. And in fact, Hope was the nearest to it. Here's Ashby now. Hope's up there again. And it's Parler. Good ball to Carnu. Now they've got a spread to the left here, Arsenal, with Patrick Vieira and Jeffers. Attacking Patterson, Francis Jeffers comes off the goalkeeper. Wiltord, a goal for Arsenal. Sylvain Wiltord. Puts the Gunners in front after 37 minutes. And it was really the swift break from a Gillingham attack that caught out the nationwide team. Jeffers was released on the left, went all the way. Bartram doing his best to beat out the shot and a nice clever finish by Sylvain Wiltord with the outside of the foot here. The ball came out to him quite conveniently, but uh, he finished it very comfortably. Will Tord, who scored six goals in the FA Cup last season, puts Arsenal ahead in the fifth round this time. The likes of Henri and Perez kept by Arsene Wenger on the bench today. And I'm pretty certain that's to do with Tuesday's match in Germany. David Siemens there as well, waiting to reclaim his place, both, I suppose, for Arsenal and England eventually. And this could be the last attack of the half, and if it is, it's with Gillingham, with uh, Marlon King. To Per Petrini. And that's come off Edu. And the referee will give a throw in here to Gillingham. Tony Adams again exerting his acknowledged influence. And indeed, he has been pretty comfortable as Arsenal have in defence in the first half and in attack Sylvan Wiltord scoring the goal after 38 minutes following two earlier efforts from Arsenal that had struck the crossbar so a little gap in class is showing at half time it's Arsenal 1 Gillingham 0 Gillingham the sort of club that uh, defy the force of football gravity when it comes to uh, resources. They operate well within their means in Division 1, but have still managed to redevelop one side of their Priestfield Stadium with restaurants and cafes and banqueting hall that uh, would almost be the envy of clubs like Arsenal for size. Oh, and Ray 
Tahala risked a pass there, which Patrick Vieira couldn't have been expected to get to, and Shaw is away for Gilling. If he plays this right, he's got a great position for Marlon King, and Gillingham have equalised! And it's Marlon King, who was an Arsenal fan as a boy, who scores at Highbury in front of the Gillingham supporters. Less than two minutes into the second half, and now we've got a cup tie. Well, King was in the news for rather different reasons earlier this week, but uh, he'll make headlines for the right reasons now. Shaw plays the ball perfectly, and King, who's such a good finisher, ex-Barnet player, drives the ball beyond Richard Wright. The young left-back got a bit caught out there for space, and King, well, it was uh, a dead-eyed finish, really, and it's made it Arsenal 1, Gillingham 1. Jeffers for Arsenal. Free kick. Well, Gillingham is saying no. Hope thinks that Jeffers made rather too much of that, but Andy Durso was in no doubt. Well, it's one of those where the referee is a lot closer than the commentator, I have to say. And there looked to me as though there was a little contact there. Now then, can Edu produce a typical Brazilian free kick here with his left foot? Difficult for the goalkeeper, this. The wall is so wide now. And it's Edu. Kanu. They were only level for two minutes, Gillingham. And the Nigerian, back from the Nations Cup, puts Arsenal back in front. The Brazilian takes the free kick. Vince Bartram got hands to the ball, but it was Carnu to whom it went. And after that, it was only going in one place. So the Nigerian who scored at Watford in the third round before he went away, comes back and scores in the fifth round. Snapping up the rebound to make it Arsenal 2, Gillingham 1. Chris Hope may still be feeling that it was a harsh free kick, but uh, once it was awarded, then the uh, Brazilian took over. And here's Wiltord with Carnu to his right. And that, oh, he's through Wiltord for Arsenal on his own. Finds Jeffers. Good save, Bartram. Well, if he had to make amends for the free kick, and it was partly down to him, he certainly did it there. He's kept Gillingham in the cup with that save because that looked like 3 1 and possibly all over. The defender who fell was Ashby, which made it rather easier for Wiltord. Then you thought he might give it to uh, Jeffers. Then he did give it to Jeffers, and Bartram made the save. And now it's a corner to Arsenal. was Perpetrini on the post. Certainly his second clearance anyway. <laughs> David Perpetrini just rescuing Gillingham there. It's a real crowded penalty area. I don't think Jeffers gets a touch. It comes, I think, of Ifeonura. But uh, certainly a studied clearance off the line. Very deliberate by David Perpetrini. Ty Gooden for Gillingham. And that's a brilliant effort. Oh, what a goal! You won't see a better one than that in the FA Cup. Ty Gooden, a former Arsenal junior, has made it 2-2. And what an eight minutes we've had here. That was a fabulous shot. And Arsenal are standing around looking at each other. I don't think they can believe that he's come virtually from nowhere here, Gooden. He's gone past two defenders and a rocket with the left foot. Richard Wright just looks around and sees it in the back of the net. Well, that will go down as one of the great strikes of the season. Ty Gooden for Gillingham, who've come from behind twice. And 
does Arsene Wenger need to think about using Therese and Henri? Because Andy Hessenthaler's team have uh, had a big say in this cup tie. This is Carnu to Will Tord. A very good play by Arsenal and Will Tord threatening again and so was Edu and so was Carnu. Bartram makes another good save. This time it was fingertips, possibly with a smile on the face as well. Because Carnu, Wiltord, Edu, they were all involved there. And that was a good stop with the arm outstretched. Corner to Arsenal. That's not a good delivery from Edu. Much of the relief of Gillingham, no doubt. It wasn't quite Ronnie Radford, but you know what I mean. Here they come, Therese and Henri, initially arrested by Wenger. He might have wished he wouldn't have to use them today, but he's got to now. Francis Jeffers is one of those called to the touchline. And Edu as well is coming off. But what a compliment to Gillingham this is. <laughs> They've pushed Arsenal far enough for them to use the two players they wanted to rest. Sure. Perez, now then, Ray Parlis to his right. There are three others up for Arsenal, and Gillingham have got to try and cover all the angles here. Carnu's back heel. Didn't quite find Parler, but it will now. This is Will Tord. Sure was uh, Smith was in the way. Parler. It's come to Henri. Corner. Adams and Campbell both forward. And this time with uh, Perez on and Edu off, it's going to be the outswinger. Adams is there. Perez again. Adams! Oh, it's 3 2 Arsenal! The skipper's back with a goal. Well, Tony Adams, who came back with a goal in the reserves in midweek, scores a rather more important one here. Perez drifts the ball in, and, well, it was a muscular challenge here. Gillingham had two defenders in there as well, but... Uh, I don't quite know what it came off in the end, but it certainly came off Tony Adams. It's a very good challenge by Hessen Tyler on Juan, and he's going to... Oh, couldn't quite find Marlon King, because Tony Adams read his intentions. Here's Perez. Ten minutes left, plus stoppage time. Gillingham trying to come back for the third time in this cup tie. Thierry Henry. Oh, and he's got Perez in here, and Will Tord is waiting. Oh, and again, Will Tord, and it's 4-2. And that may be it now. Sylvan Will Tord just loves the FA Cup. Six goals last season in the competition. And he's got two today. This is Perez picking it up from Henri. The first time, defender's feet. The second time, Hope couldn't do anything about that one, having blocked the first. And it's a great compliment to Gillingham that it's taken three world-class French forwards to finally break them down. Sylvain Wiltord with his second of the game. Perez was in an offside position, but I don't think you'd rule it out for that on that occasion. Hessenthaler. Here, Vieira to Henri. Oh, lovely. And here's Juan and Wiltord coming in. Oh, just scraped the side netting. Otherwise, it was going to be the hat trick for Sylvain Wiltord. The Brazilian picked up the pass from Thierry Henri. It was a nice cross. I think, to be fair to Bartram, he had the post covered.
Jackson was sold a bit short there and uh, players picking each other up three minutes to go this is Vieira and Will Tour to Juan Henri telling him where to put it in the centre it's going to come to Ray Parler unless they're careful oh what a volley what a way to finish a cup time Ray Parler with an instant strike and this is a goal to rival that of Gooden right foot arrowed above the goalkeeper and uh, maybe Sven Joran Eriksson will keep an eye on Ray Parler still wasn't in the England squad this week but uh, that's something he's capable of doing from midfield well Paul Scully will look back on this experience and think that Gillingham did themselves proud don't deserve in a way to be 5-2 down but they've contributed to a terrific cup tie a compelling, exhilarating cup tie at Highbury. And full marks to Gillingham for contributing so much to it. Twice coming from behind, Marlon King with the first goal. A memorable one for Hessenthaler's team from Gooden for the second. And then on 63 minutes, Arsene Wenger paying them the biggest compliment of all, having to bring on Perez and Henri to help turn the game back in Arsenal's favour, which it did as they ran out winners of a highly eventful game by five goals to two. I thought the, the players applied themselves fantastic today and uh, they worked their socks off, but uh, at two all, um, you know, they, uh, they went up another gear and, uh, and their class told in the end. So, a uh, little bit disappointed, but, uh, you know, I couldn't fault my players, they worked their socks off. A word about Gillingham's performance? Great. I must just say uh, congratulations to Gillingham. They, they were outstanding, the fans were outstanding. And uh, they gave everything today, uh, they were just uh, formidable. King's strike was sweet, Gordon's was superb. You won't see two better strikes, will you? No, two fantastic strikes. Um, Marlon does that every day in training, and he's got some good goals like that uh, this season. And uh, when Ty flicked it over, I thought he's going to hit this, and he, you know, he's done them a few times himself, and a uh, fantastic strike. And uh, I say, uh, there's some good goals today. Ty, you couldn't have scored a better goal than that in the circumstances. Uh, no, probably that's right. I, I've actually scored a couple, probably b actually better than that, but um, with the circumstances and the size of the game, uh, probably not, not a better one, no. I suppose the next round, anyone will do, will they? Well, uh, I don't know. We just have to expect we would like a home game and uh, against an opposition, of course, we, we cannot choose. We just want to beat every, everybody. Terrific game, Mark. loads of goals, yeah. great goals as well, and Gillingham certainly played their part. They did, it was an outstanding cup tie, and obviously to come back uh, twice behind to Arsenal. A um, little bit fortunate at half-time just to be, uh, only to be 1-0 down because Arsenal hit the bar in a couple of times, yeah. but you know, they kept going, they played an open game, in the end probably to their own detriment, mm. but uh, Arsenal, we know about the quality, we know about the class, and it did show in the end, but it was a little bit harsh, I think, certainly 5-2. But, but they certainly scored a couple of oh, classic goals, didn't what. they? Absolutely brilliant pair of them, and uh, I doubt in the Division One season so far they've scored any better than these two. Under pressure, running at Arsenal, and I didn't really fancy Marlon King there. To be honest with you, it's a superb finish and lots of pace, lots of power on it. Richard Wright was in a good position, but whacked it into the back of the net, and obviously that was the first equaliser. Mm. The only problem was it, you know, it was only two minutes later Arsenal went back in front, but back they came and. This is Ty Gooden's moment of magic. So he's Even scored, better. Got better he's well, I'd, I'd like <laughs> to see them. <laughs> this is brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Look at the height of it. It goes over Richard Wright and dips down. So, those those two goals were were quality yeah. to Gillingham and uh, probably a reference of, of the way they played. That's the old question: What happened next? Yeah, well, you know, you can imagine that you're a Gillingham player. You've got it back to, to two each at Highbury, and then uh, I think it was 22 minutes past four. <laughs> and this happened, which is really what you don't want, yeah. especially if you've done so well. <laughs> um, certain couple of gentlemen, the cavalry are on the way. Here we go, Perez comes on. Just as you're getting Jeffers. tired. <laughs> just as you're getting tired, just as you're thinking, oh, we might just hold out here and get a replay. And then, of course, the two of them came on and uh, they were brilliant. I mean, great ball in the Tony Adams goal from Perez. And, I mean, the thing about it was he treated it like a training game, not being disrespectful to Gillingham, but they were... They were the pair of them together, brilliant. They always seem to have time, always seem to have space. Interchange of passes. Reading of each other's play and 
brilliant ball here from Henri. Perez, head up, good player into Viltor. Viltor actually did very well to score that with his yeah. second attempt because he had to dig it out of his feet. We just show you this because um, we spoke about the two goals that Gillingham scored. I don't think any other Division One team has scored a better goal against him this season than that. That was absolutely brilliant. Cracking goal. By Parler. No, I mean, you've, you've said lots of nice things, but Alan, I mean, a terrific game like that, fantastic goals. You've still found something to bleat about, and it concerns the England defender, Sol Campbell. You're a bit unsure about Oh, it? shouldn't he? Well, I thought it was a fantastic game before we start, yeah. and um, I like Campbell. I think yeah. that after a slow start, he's played progressively better and better for Arsenal. If he has got a weakness, it is positionally, and occasionally he wanders into a bad position, he knocks off. I think today that um, if the ball is on one side of the park and you're on the other side mm. of the park as a centre-back, you cannot afford to get behind your core central defender or the full-back on either side as well because you yeah. play everybody on side. And that's what happened at, at Gillingham's first goal. I don't want to take anything away from King because it's a fantastic strike, mm. but you've got to be good positionally. Here we have Shaw on the break. We pick up Campbell here. He's backing off. That's fine because Tony Adams comes in the picture. He's got to take his position now off of Tony Adams, right? That's still fine. Do not go any further back. But he wanders in, wanders in, and that is a terrible position to get into because when Shaw plays it through, I think King's offside there, apart from Saul Campbell playing him onside. It's a fantastic hit, but that's a worry for Arsenal and a worry for England as well. Ericsson's in the stand as well. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I don't know, what age are you, 25, 26? I mm -hmm. think that if you've been bad positionally at that age, I think you're always going to have problems. And, um, you know, would you play him alongside Ferdinand for England? I think what Ericsson's got to do is keep playing them together for a certain length of time and then make a crucial decision. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Good strong run this from Pires. Got away from Balak, has Canu ahead of him and Wiltor wide. It is Sylvan Wiltor for Arsenal. It's Pires, it's 1 0 Arsenal. Bastur. Made a couple of challenges and uh, then went to earth. Now, how's the referee going to interpret this one? Carl is off. Arsenal's 12th dismissal of the season. Vranjes. Nervin is playing wide now. And in towards Berbatov. Off the crossbar. In again by Schneider for Berbatov. And cast on! 35 seconds short of 90 minutes. And Bayer Leverkusen have denied Arsenal the win. Even so, Group D stays all square. The Gunners looking good with two of their three remaining matches at home.